God look like? That's a serious question, ladies and gentlemen. Whenever you go to the scriptures and you show a Christian, hey, God is a black man. He's described as a black man. We're made in the image of the most high God. They'll tell you, no, he doesn't have a body. No, no one's ever seen him. No, he don't look like you, you nappy head, big lip, big nose, nigga. My God, you listen to them when they say that, my God. Well, their God is a white dude. It's a white guy by the name of Pope Alexander. When they painted the image of that gay guy in the Sistine Chapel, it was the Pope Alexander. That's who you guys are at. Or maybe even that weirdo cartoon character from Family Guy. But yes, folks, the most high, he does have a body. He wears clothes, he sits on a throne, and yes, man has seen him and let's get into it let me get the book of daniel chapter 7 verse 9 read the book of daniel chapter 7 verse 9 Be i beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow and the head of his, and the hair of his head like the pure wool his throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire so right here where it says i beheld till the thrones were cast down that's all the kingdoms that were cast down who establishes the kingdoms? The most high God, he does. And the ancient of days. Now, why do they call him the ancient of days? Because he has no time, ladies and gentlemen. There's no time. He's before what you would call the beginning. You can't measure his time. He's the ancient of days. Did sit whose garment was white as snow. So in order to have a garment, you have to have a body, ladies and gentlemen. This is what Daniel was seeing. Daniel was in the spirit. He saw the most high God and the hair of his head like the pure wool. There's only one group of people on this earth that have woolly hair. That's black people. Instead of the pure wool, he's a beautiful black man. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. Those wheels are the chariots that he's surrounded by. See, when we start to talk about the ancient of days, the book of Psalm chapter 90 verse 2 says, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from the everlasting to everlasting, thou art Yahweh. Yahweh created the entire existence. And even before existence, it was the ancient of days. See? And we have to know and understand the most high God established dominions. He established kingdoms. He even established gods for all you other nations. But to the Lord, his portion is Israel. He's the God of the Israelites. And we can get that in the book of Exodus chapter three, verse six, read. The book of Exodus chapter three and verse six. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. So the Most High appeared face to face. God appeared face to face with Moses, ladies and gentlemen. And what did he say? I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Notice he didn't say the God of the white man, the God of the Egyptian, the God of the Chinese. No, he's only the God of the Israelites, ladies and gentlemen. And he does have a name. And we're going to go through some of those names. Let me get the book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. Read. The book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. So here's an angel speaking to Moses, and he's letting them know the most highest name is I am. And look at what he says. I am hath sent me unto you. It was I am. He is, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get into some more names of the Most High God. Let me get the book of Exodus chapter 6, verse 3, read. The book of Exodus chapter 6 and verse 3. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, Yahweh, was I not known of to them. But by my name, Yahweh, was I not known to them. And to who? And who are them? Abraham, Isaac, and unto Jacob. His name is Yahweh. The footnote here, I know you see Jehovah, but the J wasn't even in existence when Exodus was being written. It's Yahweh, ladies and gentlemen. The book of Psalm chapter 83, verse 18, King David let us know that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Yahweh, art the most high over all the earth. So he is the most high God. There are many gods. Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus, 
He's a God. Satan is God. He's the God over this earth right now. That's why there's so much wickedness. When Yahweh takes over this earth, there won't be any more wickedness. There won't be any more sin, no more evil. It's going to be vain. So right now, the earth is given into the hands of the wicked and the children of Satan are the Edomites, specifically Amalek. But let's be clear, when we start to talk about Yahweh, the most high God's only begotten son looks just like his father. And we can get that in the book of John chapter 14, verse nine, read. The book of John chapter 14 and verse nine. Yahweh saith unto him, have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me have seen the father. And how sayest thou then, show us the father? So he's in the exact image of his father, ladies and gentlemen, the exact image. Now, is he his father? No, because he prayed to his father. When he was on the cross, he prayed to his father. Before he was to get crucified, he prayed to his father. It pleased his father to see Yahweh get bruised. Now that we know that Yahweh looks exactly like his father, let's get a better description of what Yahweh looks like. Let me get the book of Revelation chapter one, verse 11 read the book of revelation chapter 1 verse 11 saying i am alpha and omega the first and the last and what thou seest write in a book so he's appearing before john the revelator and he's telling john what you see see a lot of you people say well jesus doesn't have a color Je no one's seen jesus right here ladies and gentlemen he said what you see right in a book. So now we're going to see, read. And send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. So these are the seven churches, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get into his description. Let me get the book of Revelations, chapter 1, verse 14, read. The book of Revelations, chapter 1, and verse 14. His head and his hair are white like wool as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So remember, Yahweh looks exactly like Yahweh. His head and his hairs, remember when we read back in Daniel chapter 7, 9, it said that Yahweh's hair was like the pure wool. His head and his hairs were like wool, as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire because he drank wine moderately and his feet like going to fine brass. What color is brass? It's brown, ladies and gentlemen. It's no other color than brown. That's what color brass is. As if they burned in a furnace. So his feet were so dark, it looked like they burned in a furnace. He was a dark, dark, dark skinned black man. And his voice as the sound of many waters. He was loud. He was austere. When he spoke, he spoke as the sound of many waters, ladies and gentlemen. Let me get the book of Revelation, chapter 20, verse 4. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 20, and verse 4. And I saw a throne, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh. So John the Revelator saw thrones, and they sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. Judgment, the judgment of the Most High will be given unto Yahweh. That judgment will also be given to the elect, ladies and gentlemen, to judge the earth. Read. And for the word of God. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witnesses of Yahweh. So the elect, ladies and gentlemen, they will be thrown into those prison camps and you, some of you elect, you have a lot that's coming to you, and that lot is for our heads to be cut off. And for the word of Yahweh, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their forehead, or in their head, or in their hands. So, that had not worshipped the beast, that's what we're missing out on, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, RFI chips are going to exist, but everybody is not going to be getting that RFI chip. You think Kim jong Young over in... North Korea is going to be getting the RFI chip in his hand? You think Vladimir Putin is going to be getting a chip in his hand? You think them Saudi Arabians are going to be getting chips in their hands? No, that's not the, that's not the mark of the beast. I wouldn't get the chip if I was you. It said, watch this, worship the beast. That means you worship his system. 
you're in sin if you're in sin you got that mark and it's way way bigger you know a lot of people talking about well with the mark you can't buy or sell or you'll be able to buy or sell that right there is talking about nations ladies and gentlemen and their ability to do commerce that's not talking about the low man on the totem pole the children of Israel have an opportunity in which to be able to repent because you receive grace. But a two thirds of you, no matter what you read in the Bible, no matter how many times you go to church, no matter how many videos you watch, no matter how many Israelites talk to you, you are going to be rebellious against this word. You're not going to receive it. You're going to think that you can do whatever you want. On the Sabbath, you guys are out spending money and doing whatever the hell you want. There's so much lasciviousness in these churches and you think because jesus white jesus died on the cross for you because that's the beast that you guys worship but guess what you're gonna go right along with him into this thing called the lake the lake of fire babylon the great when those hot icbm missiles turn this place into a barbecue pit and then it's gonna be concentrated fire from God's chariots. Remember, we read back in Daniel chapter 7, verse 9, We it talked about the wheels of God. Those are the chariots. And you can get the full description beginning in Ezekiel chapter 1, which talks all about what you dummies call flying saucers or UFOs or UAPs. No, those are the chariots of God, also known as the chariots of Israel. It's going to be concentrated fire coming from them chariots turning this place called the United States into Babylon the Great. Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. That mark in their forehead is you, it's the policies, the religions, the theologies, the ideologies of Babylon the Great cemented in your forehead, cemented in your brain. And then you do actions to support that. You believe in fornication, so then you go commit fornication. You believe in adultery, so you go commit adultery. You believe in murder, so you go commit murder. You believe in idolatry, so you go commit idolatry. You believe in having other gods before you, you know, you. Happy birthday to you. Merry Christmas. You believe in that and you go exercise it. And then you have the nerve to try and incorporate white Jesus in. Because that's who your God is. And they live and reign with Christ a thousand years. So these men who did not receive the mark, who did not worship the beast, will reign with the Lord for a thousand years. Look, reign, that means rule the earth. These are the elect that will rule the earth. So even in listening to this, a lot of you people say, well, no, no one's seen God. God is a spirit. He's a spirit like Casper the Friendly Ghost. He's a spirit. He Really? You know, the Most High has a garment. Remember, we read that back in Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. And his garment is pretty big. And we can get that in the book of Psalm chapter 104, verse 2. Read. The book of Psalm chapter 104, verse 2. Who covers thyself with light as with a garment who stretcheth out the heavens like a curtain. So his garment stretches out the heavens like a curtain. The most high, the creator of all. Yes, folks, he does have a body, ladies and gentlemen. And when we're talking about those chariots, right? These are not UAPs, these chariots of God. As we read about in the book of Daniel chapter 7, verse 9, these chariots serve two purposes. Number one, they're war machines. Number two, they're transport. Let me get the book of Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 15, read. The book of Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 15. Now, as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of a burrell, and they four had one likeness. And their appearance and their work was as it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. So I want you to imagine the flying saucers that you guys see in the movie. It's a disc. It's a circular disc. Well, as Ezekiel was describing this circular disc, to him, it appeared to be a wheel in the middle of a wheel. But not like that. Not like these, these odd drawings that a lot of people have, like of these monstrous abominations. No, they literally look like the things that you guys actively see in the air or that the news has been showing you. And it's also describing the angels. The angels control these chariots with their minds. Now, Ezekiel also, while he was in the spirit, saw Yahweh sitting on his throne. 
and the, which is another witness, by the way. And we can get that in the book of Ezekiel, chapter one, verse twenty-five. Read the book of Ezekiel, chapter one, verse twenty-five. And there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads when they stood and had let down their wings, and above the firmament, firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness of the appearance of a man above it a man above upon it so pay attention folks and above the firmament that was over their head was the likeness of a throne now what's the firmament when you look up in the sky when you see that that's the second heaven that firmament is the second heaven, ladies and gentlemen. And watch this. The likeness of a throne. The only one who sits on that throne is the most high God. As the appearance of sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man, ladies and gentlemen. Who well, God is a spirit. Right here it says the likeness of a man. So we already talked about he had hair like pure wool. That he has very dark skin his garment was white we already see that he looks exactly like his son his beard is white and now right here right here it says and upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man he sits on his throne by himself alone he doesn't share that space with jesus and the holy ghost he's not bipolar ladies and gentlemen there's the most high god then there's his son Yahweh. And then the Spirit of God, known as the Holy Ghost. Verse 27, and I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward. I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about. That's the glory of the Most High God. It looked like fire. Look, what do you think the color of amber is? Fire, bright orange, red. But look at what it said. From the appearance of his loins, that's his lower extremities, loins, even upward and from the appearance of his loins. So for when you people say, God doesn't have a body because he's a spirit, that's because you guys don't read the Bible. I mean, you don't even read the New Testament where Yahweh says describe. Yahweh just says, if you see me, you seen the Father. The, the New Testament says he's in the exact similitude of his Father. He's in the exact image of his Father. So you don't even believe the scriptures. As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face and I heard a voice of one that spake. Right here, all that brightness was the glory of the most high God, ladies and gentlemen. And when we want to know about the Lord, right? So we describe, okay. So we describe what the most high looked like. But what does the Lord want from us, ladies and gentlemen? Two things, fear God and keep his commandments. A lot of you Christians will say, no, I love God. I don't fear God. He wants you to fear God and keep his commandments. Well, I love God. I love God. Okay, good. You're supposed to love the most high with your whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. Yes. And what does that mean to love God? What does that mean? If you say to your wife, for all you men out there that have a wife or you want a wife, or you think about a wife. I love my wife, but I'm not going to pay the mortgage. I love my wife, but I'm not going to pay her car note. I love my wife, but I'm not going to go to work and make any money. I love my wife, but I'm not going to financially support her. I love my wife, but I'm not going to have sex with her when she wants. Then you don't love your wife. Or you'll say you love your kids and you neglect them. Then you don't love your kids. Love is an action, ladies and gentlemen, for the love of God is to keep his commandments, ladies and gentlemen. And let's talk about that love that you are supposed to have for the most high God. Let me get the book of Exodus chapter 20, verse three, read the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse three. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Right there is the first commandments, ladies and gentlemen. If you love the Lord God with your whole heart, mind, soul and strength, he says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me, not your wife, not your kids, not yourself, not your job, not your cars, not your favorite sports team, not money, not nothing. 
not not lasciviousness, not your own flesh, not your damn dog. He says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. But you say you love God. Let's see what else the Lord requires for you since you love God. Read. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. So you're not supposed to make unto yourselves any idol. Now, here's the problem with those idols. People tend to worship them. And you know you do. You guys who love basketball, you love football so much, you know you worship it. When your team wins, look at how great you feel. Look at how exempt. You screaming, you jumping, and you yelling, you're losing your mind. But when your team loses, do you know that domestic violence is very high on the day of Super Bowl? Because a lot of people are going to be disappointed. You worship these teams. The Lord don't want you to do any of that to your idols. And we can get that in verse five, read. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Wait, read that again. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. He is a jealous God. That's another one of his names, ladies and gentlemen, is jealous. He's jealous for the children of Israel. If you have a wife and she's always constantly talking about her ex, wouldn't you be jealous about that? Wouldn't you? I mean, in, in all honesty, if you were a stepdad and your stepkids who you raise and love and support, and they're always talking about how great their dad is, even though they see their dad once a month, that would make you jealous. The Most High said you are not to put anything, no other gods before him and don't make onto yourselves any idols to worship them because he's a jealous God, read. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Visiting the sins of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation, which lets you know what? That regeneration is in the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. There's no new thing under the sun. We've all been here before. You know what happens when you die? You go see the Lord and he gives you your judgment. And then you know what happens? In the third and fourth generation, you get born right back down here on earth to live out that judgment. That's why some of y'all go to prison. Some of y'all have cancer, all kind of weird diseases. Some of you guys have deformity. Some of you guys lose your kids early. All the bad stuff. These are judgments that were placed upon you by the most high God when you came back down here in the third and fourth generation. Read. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. That keep my what? Keep my commandments. Watch this. Thousands of them showing mercy unto, unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So there's none of this. That's the Old Testament that we don't have to keep. These are the Ten Commandments, ladies and gentlemen. Most of you Christians say, oh, well, I keep the Ten Commandments. Really? Because right here, the Lord said, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandment. Verse seven, read. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. So the Lord says, don't take his name in vain. And how do you take the Lord's name in vain? When you lying and you and you using it, you always all oh, y'all putting everything on God. Are you swearing when you know damn well you lying? Even when you go to, if you're testifying in court, everybody sits on that witness stand lying, knowing damn well that you lying, but yet you'll put your right hand on the Bible and swear to tell the truth and the whole truth and nothing but the truth. That whole thing is, de is designed to put you in unbelievable sin, ladies and gentlemen. Well, how else do you do it? Telling people they don't have to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, that the Old Testament is done away with. This is how you use the Lord's name in vain. God is white. Jesus is white. Jesus died on the cross. So I have grace so I can do whatever I want and 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 I'll put it in the hands of Jesus. Jesus is in the judgment seat. The most high's only begotten son, Yahweh is in the judgment seat. You put it in his hands, you're gonna be executed. Christmas is a December the 25th. These are how you use the Lord's name in vain. Read. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless. That the Lord said he ain't gonna hold you guiltless. That taketh his name in vain. He will not hold you guiltless. There ain't going to be no, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That right there is going to get a whole lot of you folks. Because you believe that Saturday is fun day. Saturday is actually sin day. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, sin day, Sunday. 
because Saturday is the day that you guys commit all your sin. You know, you only live once, right? In that YOLO, y'all, you guys YOLO on Saturday. Buying, selling, having sex, cooking. You do everything under the sun other than keep it holy unto the Lord, right? Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So you're supposed to get everything done in six days, everything. But the seventh day, it's the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So the seventh day, which is Friday night to Saturday night, ladies and gentlemen, 24 hours. The Lord created the heavens and the earth. A lot of you guys think that Sunday is the Lord's day. Sunday is not the Lord's day. Sunday is the first day of the week, ladies and gentlemen. Friday night to Saturday night is the Sabbath. Read. In it thou shalt not do any work. So you can't do no work. Read. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So none of these individuals that are in your family or is your household can do any work. 11. Read. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So he's telling you why you're supposed to do it because in six days, he created the entire existence, ladies and gentlemen. Now, in all honesty, one day to the Lord is a thousand years to us. One day to the Lord is a thousand years to us. In all actuality, it took 6,000 years to create existence. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth. So again, we're going over these 10 commandments here that you can find in the book of Exodus chapter 20. And right here, honor thy father and thy mother. Remember, you guys said that you love God. Well, okay, well, if you love God, you're going to keep these commandments because that's what Yahweh should say. If you love me, keep my commandments. And right here, he said, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Then what's that land? The land of Canaan. This is for you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. This, that's all this is for. The other nations, y'all can do whatever y'all want on Saturday. Esau, Ishmael, Moab, you do whatever you want. These laws weren't given to you. They were given to the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Thou shalt not kill. Do no murder. Don't be lying in wait. Thou shalt not commit adultery. You cannot have sex with someone who's already married. Read. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. So you can't conjure up, you can't conjure up any kind of a lie against your fellow black, Hispanic, and neighbor American that's going to get them in trouble when it's not true. Read. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. So you can't want anything that doesn't belong to you that belongs to your neighbor. That's your fellow blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So anything that belongs to your neighbor, you don't want it. Because if you do, then guess what you'll do? Take a look at that. It said, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. So anything that belongs to your fellow Black, Hispanic, or Native American that doesn't belong to you, it says, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Because when you do, you'll commit adultery. If you even look at her, and lust after her, you've committed adultery already in your heart. Or, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox or ass. Because what's going to happen is you'll wind up stealing. You'll wind up killing them to take it. Now, look, watch what the children of Israel did. Give me verse 18, read. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they were removed and stood afar off. Why? because they were highly intimidated by the Most High God. But they were all in agreement with these laws that the Most High established with the children of Israel. And understand this thing, ladies and gentlemen, when we want to understand the Most High, we already see what he looks like. He's a dark-skinned black man with woolly hair. We are in the image of the Most High God. Adam was in the image of the Most High God. We all come from Adam. We understand that he gave us very strict laws, statutes, and commandments that we must abide by. If we love him, we must fear him and keep his commandments. If we love him, we must obey his laws, his statutes, and commandments. If you, Black, Hispanic, and Native American, obey God's laws, statutes, and commandments, guess what he's going to do for you? 
We can get that in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. Read. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Isn't that beautiful? You see, if we were to have obeyed God's law, statutes, and commandments, the Lord would have set us high above all nations on the earth. And we will take that position again. But unfortunately, we didn't do that and we're not doing that right now. So guess what we get to live currently right now in the land of the living in Esau's world, the cursed. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now you can go ahead and go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 through 68, see all those curses. We went into slavery. We have the most horrible disease diseases our children have been taken away from us they're being taken away from us right now our women have been raped and ravaged our men turn into feminine homosexuals and yes folks the mic drop verse 68 we went into egypt meaning that we went into slavery all over the world in ships that didn't happen to nobody else ladies and gentlemen so don't let them fool you so today we just went over what does God look like? And as we can see in the image right there, he's a dark-skinned black man with red eye, whose face shines like lightning, who has pure woolly hair. His garment is white as snow. He sits on his throne, his judgment seat, and he judges the entire earth. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Israelites is the only family that he knows. He sent his only begotten son only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and nobody else. And with that, shalom. 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 And I decided to turn over to your descendants the biggest and the best piece of property in the whole world. Now you boys knows what's down there. Where do you think it is? If you ask me, Lord, I don't think they come any better than the land of Canaan. The land of Canaan. It so happens I love your family, and I delight to honor you. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Lord. Enjoy yourselves. Yes, indeed, Lord. Yes, indeed, Lord. Yes, sir, Lord.